Shesky here, and welcome to Fantasy House. This is the world's number one make-believe real estate podcast. I love doing this show because every week we get to go on a guided tour through a different person's imaginary dream home. They're always pushing the limits with mind-blowing houses and weird technologies and magic and all that cool stuff. They make weird, unique rooms. And, you know, I ask them, I'm like, hey, could you, like, come up with, like, appliances and technologies that we don't even have so they can solve like your very unique problems. People do that. And and really it's just good old fashioned creativity and silliness. Fantasy House podcast is NSFW. It's not safe for work, although we're super Mr. Rogers inspired. It's a lot more of an adult Mr. Rogers experience. So it's raw. It's honest. We talk about sex, drugs, people's bathroom habits. Sometimes people take us to dark places and we're all about like authenticity and really reigniting that carefree, playful spirit we had when we were four or five years old. You know, just fearless exploring of our imaginations and ourselves. Do you remember that? I love that. I feel like we need that as adults too. And that's what I want to facilitate with, with Fantasy House. I want to I want to inspire people to explore that again. Get that feeling, that little fire lit inside for story time and imaginary make-believe time and just being ourselves. And it really is a great time. In Nathan Hurd's episode, he has a zero-gravity room. So you just go in the room, flip a switch, and you're floating around. Jade Catapretta uh, has a lazy river going through her fantasy house that has sexualized dolphins in it. Hmm? Fifi Dosh has a private hot tub on top of a private mountain in her backyard. John and Tom from Chad Goes Deep, their fantasy house is actually a cloud that floats around like an RV in the sky. Uh, so they can go anywhere they want. Nick the Plumber, he's got a live studio audience. So when he's with his family and he drops the punchline of one of his dad jokes, he gets a real applause. Joel Jimenez loves to cook and, by the way, is an amazing cook. Uh, but in, in Joel, Joel Jimenez's fantasy house, he doesn't want to clean up. He hates cleaning up. Loves to cook, hates cleaning up. Well, he's, he's got a kitchen that washes itself. Uh, in episode 94, Mike Ishak's kitchen is just a portal to his aunt's Indonesian kitchen. So he can have ringdung anytime he wants, which I've never had ringdung in real life. But we had it on his episode imaginarily. And if it's anywhere as delicious as it is fun to say, it's got to be good, right? Ring dung. Uh, Jeremiah Watkins did a Halloween episode, and his uh, toilet paper dispenser is a mummy that you just unwrap and wipe your butt with. Nat Bay Mel doesn't even have a bathroom. Speaking of bathrooms, he simply has a wizard. That anytime you need to go, it, the wizard appears and just makes your bowels empty. Just abracadabra, poof. Or poop, poop, poof. So cool, right? Every episode is brought to you by me, John Shevsky. I am your local Southern California realtor. Not just a fantasy realtor, no, a really real realtor. And I would love to help you with anything real estate related, whether you're thinking about buying a house, selling a house, maybe you're interested in why I love multifamily apartment buildings, any of that. I would love to be of service. And if you're thinking, John, I don't care about real estate at all. That's great. But I know you know someone who does and you got to let them know. You got to say, Hey, before you go making any moves, you got to talk to my boy, John Shevsky. He's a really real realtor and he would love to be of service. And I really would. And even if you're not in SoCal, I can still help you because I have a referral network all over the country with some fantastic agents and it's growing all the time. So check in with me. Let me know because I got agents in Nashville, in Chattanooga, Austin, Texas, Boise, Idaho, Phoenix, Arizona. Like I got you covered. And like I said, that list is just growing. So just think of me when you're thinking of real estate. Be like, you know, I'm going to hit Chevsky up before I do anything. Just send me an email, fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to be of service or help in any way. My guest today, we've had a huge break. I had like five escrows, five or six escrows. Uh, they were super time intensive between that family and the pandy. I, I, I just was not able to give Fantasy House the love that it deserves. So now we're back. And how are we back? We're celebrating with one of my best friends, one of my favorite guests on Fantasy House, one of the most hilarious creative comedians. And just like, just the chemistry of collaboration with this man is just always fire he's my road dog sandro the Yokolano is here and we are we're, we're gonna rock so in the words of the great angelo bowers let us do this Hi, I'm Sandro Colano from Florida, Michigan, and this is my fantasy house kitchen. Yes. Oh, dude, the new NPR style intro. I'm actually really excited about that. Um, well, dude, my sweet baby Sandy Rowe. Thanks for doing Nobody. this, man. 
Yeah, thank you, buddy. Thanks for having me on. I've always uh, it's always a pleasure to hang out with you, and I've done these a few times, you know, and uh, and I always you know have fun. I always I, I never remember what I said because it's always in the moment. That's great. Uh, it's the best. That's a symptom of good riffing. Is that you don't mm-hmm. know what happened back then. Yeah. <laughs> I was drugged, or I was just riffing in the moment. Yeah, I was just, yeah, yeah. Were you on drugs or high, or were you just living in the moment? It's like I, it's the what's same the thing said yeah. many Zen masters, bro. How many episodes have we done together? I think we, this, will, this will be our third or fourth, right? I think it's the. I think it's probably the. I think it's the fourth. Oh man, may the fourth be so. with you. <laughs> Star Wars yeah. day. May the fourth <laughs> be with you. May the fourth be with you. I thought people just had a lisp when that came out. <laughs> May the fourth be with you. Yeah, there was a fourth, and then they were just saying it. It's like when you say Facebook. Oh, Facebook? You're not talking about you're not talking about like you know Christianity on on, on online. <laughs> Actually, ironically, if you're on Facebook, you probably are just talking about Christianity or anti-vaccine stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, whatever. Hi, I'm on yeah. Facebook, which means I'm just smart enough to read articles and look at data, but not <laughs> smart enough to decipher the probability of data being true or relevant. Uh, welcome back. Yeah. Yeah, I read the most riveting headline today. <laughs> yeah, did you read the article? Well, the the part that was in bold, that was the article, right? It's about uh, yeah. as long as a tweet. No, that was the title. Well, yeah, it's an article of the written thing, right? Oh, good so, argument, man. You yeah, are... you could make. That's the beautiful thing about the English language is that it's made for law and. It's made for manipulating. <laughs> it really is. Um, speaking of made. In America, my guest today looks like Mike Rowe, but sounds like Mike Schmo. Give it up for a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, but honestly, though, we, we should um, – uh, let, let, yeah, let's rock and roll. Let's, let's, let's get into this. Okay. I want to go to your fantasy house okay. kitchen. I, I want to get this text message out of the way. Do it. Because I have to uh... – I'm doing a podcast with Shevsky right now, period. FYI, period. Are you on your period? Period? Okay. <clears throat> okay, sorry well, about that. No, I, I love it. I, I love it that we're not editing that out. Okay, let's go. Let's do your fantasy. Oh, do you have to wait for a reply before we so you can focus? No, 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 no. It's okay. okay. I, just want, I, I want our listeners to know, like, Sandro is a, he's a successful entertainer, and mm-hmm. that means that he could get every text could be the thing that turns him uh, from being, you know, Dave Chappelle in Men in Tights to having the Dave Chappelle show. Uh, right. So it's like you, you never know, like, what text is going to come in. That's true. And also, ironically, uh, oh, oh, fun. Hi, Shevsky. Well, say hi back for me. Shalom. Okay. Who is it? Yeah, hold on. Is you say it. Lady or? You say it right now. Shalom, lady. Mwah. Who Who is it? Nikki. Oh, it is Nikki? Oh. So I just I just audio recorded. <laughs> you just that's great. No, that's great, dude. We're having fun with technology, dude. It's we can the best. All the, fun, all the fun with technology up to the people creating the AI that will, you know, give us uh, Skynet. We have to yeah. enjoy it, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Uh, <laughs> oh, the that's, way that's the, the way, way what's his name dies in, in uh, yeah. Terminator 2? Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. That, that used to scare me when I was a kid. Yeah, really, really bad. Like, it looked like he was getting stung by a bunch of bees that all of a sudden made up their mind, you know? Like, it was just, Oh, yeah. Uh, but ironically, <laughs> I had the phone on airplane mode, but an airplane texted me. That is so ironic. Whenever I put my phone on airplane mode, I just imagine Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> All right, let's go to your fantasy house kitchen. What's your fantasy house kitchen look like? Describe it aesthetically. What does it uh, look like? First, what it look like? First thing is you walk in. There's a kitchen island. There's always going to be an island. I uh-huh. like, I like. To, so it's spread out. Big island. The uh-huh. island's got a sink. To the side of that, there is um, there is nothing but lights. The first thing is LED lights. I don't give a shit. I like lighting. That's number one. Even if it's a kitchen. Um, then instead of the sink, there is just a waterfall, continuous waterfall always going. That recy- oh, it recycles through the entire house uh, and is just ready in reserves. And um, then from there, more lights. Always lights you know, around the sink, everywhere. Uh, basically, I like the idea of having a, a, a kitchen that has the waterfall and then almost like a mountain like around it. Basically like an outdoor indoor your kitchen's um, kind of outdoor indoor. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's a great. Like an outdoor indoor kitchen, so you can barbecue and not feel like you know you know you have the sense of barbecue, but it's also 
uh, it feels like it's nat- you know natural. Yeah. Not like you know having a barbecue in the middle of uh, in the middle of some place, and you're like, oh, this is a this is a great cast iron, you know, or aluminum barbecue. Which I don't think you should be cooking with aluminum, anyways. But I don't think that's good for you. It's not good for you. No. And that's uh, if you cook with aluminum, then you have to say the word uh, aluminium if you're in the UK, and that's not good for you either. No, it's not because once you slow that down, it's like is that is that the same amount of syllables? Aluminum and aluminium. There's a different. I can't, I can't even tell. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try. Um, uh, three refrigerators, but they're not just refrigerators. They're walk-in, basically walk-in refrigerators. Oh, I want, nice, where you can put a full dead body or a cow carcass. Absolutely. Well, that's the thing. A dead body could be a cow carcass. So technically, you know, and especially if, uh, you know, like the old jokes of like, well, my mother-in-law or whatever, and that could be like a dead cow carcass. Um, I was thinking more along the lines of rock, Rocky boxing, you know. Rocky. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, I was punching it, but. Would Rocky yeah, yeah, punch yeah. A, your frozen frozen mother in law in the yeah. freezer? Probably the, because he, he's dedicated. Uh, he's got to train. Yeah, he's got to train. You know, I mean, there's nothing there's nothing worse than like getting sloppy. You know, when you're when you're a boxer and you're known for punching meat. Uh, what would a vegetarian if you're a vegan punch if that was the vegan's freezer? Oh, what frozen celery, get, like in bags. Frozen celery, like just like a bunch celery. of birds. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just punching a sack of a sack of eggplants. You know. Oh yeah. Well, or imagine if you're like a super tough, like uh, super tough vegan, like a uh, kickboxer, and you like you dip your hands in honey, and then you dip the the honey hands into like uh, walnuts, what, huh? And walnuts <laughs> into walnuts. Or what's that one fruit that's like super weird looking? And they always make uh, they always oh, make jackfruit. Like, jackfruit, yeah. With the, like, oh my god. Yeah, just imagine jackfruit, spiky stuff, all like. You're talking uh, about like the vegan blue. kickboxer, like Tom Poe would like dip his yeah. instead of the resin. He'd that's put what it, I meant. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Oh. Yeah, and then because that would still kill you. That is beautiful, but it would still kill you. See, guys, vegetables you. are dangerous too. Yeah, they're very, they're very dangerous. Squash, you know. What I'm saying is, I would like my kitchen to have as much produce as possible, and all of that produce that I don't use will be uh, composted into something else and used. Now, I'm not even sure if I'll ever use that compost or ever put it in the ground. But as long as I'm doing that thing, which is the interim, you know, moment, which is like actually. Do, putting the effort to put it in there, I think that's so much like that's the satisfaction of it. Once you start something like that, just the idea of it, and then you can just throw it. You know, um, it's, it's a healthy habit just to have too. Is to be yeah. like, we don't just throw stuff away; we put them back into upcycling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, minimal cabinets though. Minimal cabinets in the kitchen because I don't think you need too much stuff in there. You know, like I like the idea of having everything open and ornamental in the fact that like it looks good but it's still functional yeah uh, like my ornamental rug yeah ornamental exactly right you can't you they don't call them anymore they're called amazing you're listening to dad jokes by john chesky and sandra yokolano we only joke in dad form we'll be right black we'll be white <laughs> sarah we'll silverman white. made that joke on her show and it was killer so y'all can call me a dad joker, but that shit was that made it to prime time, baby. She said, "She said I'll be white back. I'll be, I'll be white black." She, it's actually a great little spot because she says, "Like I'll be black," and she goes, "Like sorry, I'll I'll be white black." And then, oh, that's nice. I feel like there's like three beats to it because you know why yeah. not? Why not, folks? Which is ironic because in this day and age, you can't get away with any beats. That's Unless right. And they're buying. Well, it's a cultural appropriation. Yeah, that's because appropriate. Beats beats come from the Middle East and. They're not for the white man. So if you use them or mention them, cancel. Shroot. Oh, Dwight Shroot. That's right. You got me. That's yeah. Well, that's why people sit, they go back and they say, uh, they say The Office, Friends, uh, um, Freaks and Geeks. These are all shows with a lot of racism in them. And, and they're right because whatever they say is racist, you're racist if you don't agree that other people are right about something being racist. Yeah. Or else, what the fuck are you going to do? I mean, are you going to sit there and tell me that you're offended at this thing, but you're offended at it, but you're still watching it? Whatever happened to being offended? That's my question. Well, that happened. It was I think offended was before Seinfeld, or it came after Seinfeld. <laughs> offended? That's like that's like oh my god! That's like when you get offended by somebody on Facebook that is your friend. It's like, well, you offended them, so of oh, course I you love that. Yeah. It's, it's like, well, you invited them, them into your world. Are you offended? Because you've been a friended. You've been a friended. You've uh, been a friend to me. Uh, so uh, the, uh, you've got this island 
what's the countertop on that island look like, by the way? I need visuals, and I know our listeners love visuals. Um, I like the idea of like almost like a kind of like a uh, like a tile, but almost like a like a like a slate or like a shale kind of like tile mm-hmm. uh, with like the really really thick grout and all different types of like I, I like you know if it doesn't have to be hundred percent smooth, it can be like rough cut, almost like okay. your yeah, so kind of rough cut. So uh, and then in in certain spots having um, uh, like a cutting board, you know, like a, a granite cutting board or a marble cutting board, something. Okay. Uh, just not wood. Wood, I like wood when I want to get as as much of every meal as everything I've cut on there. I want to remain in there. Yeah, I want it to get porous. That's that's what I use wood for. But when it's the rest of it, uh, you know, it keeps the flavors like of the the, the dead animals. But normally, <laughs> but normally, I would like it like a granite. Some spots we can cut, so it's nice and rough. But there's also spots you can you, you can manage and. Uh, um, but mainly just like a lot of, a lot of space and a lot of lights underneath cabinets. Uh, mm-hmm. I really like, I really like the idea that you can close your eyes and then open them and think that you've eaten all the hallucinogenics, uh, you know, out there. So you, you uh, like a kitchen that makes you feel like you're on drugs, even if you're as sober as a rabbi in an expensive bar. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very, that's a, that's a very good visual by the way. Is that right? Yeah, because I can relate to not wanting to spend a dime in anywhere. To be honest well, with you, I mean, my uh, friend Adam once took me to like one of those like the what do you call the like the bars that are like super fancy with the mixologist, and it was like fifteen dollars a drink. Oh and yeah, I'm spending a hundred bucks for a couple people to have like a few drinks. You're like, that wasn't. I'm not. I had to. I still have to go for dinner right now. I could have had a whiskey at home <laughs> yeah. and gone for a nice sushi or steak meal, and yet. <laughs> So well, that's the stupid thing is because when I'm in those places, I end up getting something because I, I, it's the same kind of logic that when you're like at a, like a sporting event or like a, a, a ball game, yeah, like this is going to be a seventeen dollar uh, plastic cup of beer. That's well, what you it's know ahead be. of time, like you said, you're planning on it. You know when you're going to do it. You're paying for the experience yeah. Yeah. and you're helping the economy. Yeah, that's all I want to do is help the economy. That's what I was. That's all. Every day when I wake up in the morning, I meditate and then I say, "What can I do to help the economy?" I'm going to sing that song when I wake up tomorrow. All I want to do is help the economy. I got a feeling mm-hmm. I'm probably the only, only one. one. Because yeah. like everybody else is just figuring out how to help themselves. But don't you want to help the economy? I do. I really want to help. I really want to help the economy of and myself. You, you pointed uh, at yourself just now. You said the economy. Of me. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I drive an economy line and I want to help the uh, economy. So, you know, and it's kind of must. So... It's all, it's all worth, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. If it's worth it to you. It's worth it to me. It's worth it to me. So let's go to, uh, yes. you know, you've got these fridges that are walk-ins. Is there yeah. anything in them that, that's super special that you're going to cook a meal for us with? Well, that kind of, yeah. Ooh, a little, a little sweaty talking about, it. uh, always, uh, uh, lamb shanks. Mm, yummy. Lamb shanks. I like lamb shanks. Uh, they're good. And uh, also, um, when you cook them, you can tell who wants to really be around you because they smell terrible when you cook lamb. Do they really? Yeah, it doesn't smell that good. It's like cooking tripe, uh, octopus. There's certain animals that you, you, you cook and, uh, you know, that used to be living and now they're dead. And you cook them and, uh, and they don't smell that good. But they're, you know, like beef, you know, like steak, you're like, oh, somebody's grilling a cow. Oh, steak smells, smells amazing. When oh, so good. But, yeah. but lamb doesn't smell good, huh? Lamb doesn't smell that good. Um, lamb is good. Uh, I don't know. I pretty much like everything in the fridge. That's the only thing that I would have an abundance of is uh, food. Everything else I like to get as I need because then I feel like I accumulate too much. But yeah. food, as long as it's something I can freeze, and these freezers are going to be top-notch. These will be plugged in. And uh, so I'll have you know all the good shit on there. Yeah. And uh, steaks, lamb, uh, not much pork. I don't like uh, – if it's pulled, that's fine. But, like, that stuff I like to get fresh. Um, is, yeah. is there a difference in, in freezing pork versus free, freezing lamb or beef or, or fish? I, for me personally, like uh, – so if I have uh, – like, like brisket. Brisket you can keep in, you know, in, in, the, in the freezer for it's a so long time. You can keep it in the Yeah, exactly. Meat. Yeah. I find pork is not quite as uh, – or, like, the, the pulled is not quite as, you know. It's not as resilient. Yes, exactly. There's like a, you know, I guess there, you know, it is fatty in itself too because I've had some... Uh, I feel like you're just describing stuff that we used to both bring home when we catered for blood sauce. My brain... My, my <laughs> brain like, like, you know, brain. brisket, pulled pork, beef. <laughs> like, are you just like listing off shit that we got to bring leftovers home? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's like a dude. I think about those days pretty often because I'm like, oh man, we used to get like, and then the huge trays of mac and oh, cheese, yeah. and then it's just oh, we weren't oh, living with in fear. They were only regular viruses. Oh. Yeah, right? It was just, oh, I got the cold. And then, you know, it was like, oh, shit. But I don't want the cold now either, so I get it. I know. Now, after a year of not being sick at all, I was like, I don't want anything anymore. So I'm going to just wear a mask forever. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to get one of those. I'm gonna, Reggie Watts had, like, one of those companies sent him that, that, like, full head, like, thing you just wear over your head. Oh, and my I God. Like, I was like, it looks so goofy, but also just like, you really don't trip when you're wearing that thing. Like, Yeah. What, it, was like, it was like a beekeeper's uh, uniform? Oh, no, it was like a full, like, a space helmet. It looked like, it was like a... They send, you know, they send him all like cool. He always gets cool, weird shit because he's, you know, a cool, weird dude. Yeah. So it's like one of these companies developed like a futuristic, like just wear the spacesuit thing. It's, I think it's like an air conditioned helmet. So <laughs> and he, he wore it on his Instagram, and he's so funny. He's so yeah. Funny. But uh, I, I don't. I hope that it never comes to that. But uh, uh, so now, no, either way. Getting back to uh, since I was drifting off into uh, Blade Runner dystopic uh, futures, drifting back into the fun stuff of this. Uh, uh, kitchen situation you're cooking some lamb up uh what, what like what are we what are we gonna do we're gonna sit down at a, at a table somewhere and eat a feast or, or like what, what are you gonna make what's what's getting prepared for us or are you gonna prepare for it i will i will prepare i always like to cook so um uh i will have a, we're sitting at the table which will be uh which will basically be like a bar style so i like the idea of having one of the on one of the islands almost like a little breakfast nook so it's like a little area not even so much a nook just like a little bar style so you know some stools and then if you want to bring your own stools, that's fine. You can bring them after dinner, before dinner. You know, they have a room specifically for stools. And then you can sit down and we can have uh, – You have a stool you know, room? It's a stool room, yeah. yeah. Anyone, ever, think, anyone ever take a dump in your stool room accidentally? Like, and you're like, what, what's going on in here? It smells like shit. You're like, isn't this the stool room? You're like, <laughs> yeah, it's the stool room. It's full of bar stools. Like, what? Well, exactly, which you can't – see, that's what I thought. I thought maybe if, you, if I could just uh, have um, like a little toilet on the bottom of a chair – Near the bar, that'd be a bar stool. So you could have that area just one continuous motion. Because you don't have to get up; you just go right when you're done. But always mashed potatoes, rosemary mashed potatoes, um, and then a little bit of a rosemary dressing on the lamb. I just use rosemary everything. Yeah, everyone's like, you know, I'm a little overwhelmed by the scents, but uh, you know, it's yeah. oh, it's you're overwhelmed by the it's about oh. time I leave. No, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking that somebody's like just being like, you know, uh, being like. Too much, uh, oh, overwhelmed by the sense. Like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry about that. And they come by with sage, and they sage the. Yeah. It's like, oh, they, they should take care of it. <laughs> Everyone leaves with like bloody noses. They're like, I'm just kind of yeah. worn out sensually. Yeah. Like, oh, God, sense. it's really healing in there. I freaking love sage, though. The color of sage and the smell yeah. of sage is like heavenly to me. I actually have some downstairs in a drawer that we burn every now and then just for fun. Dude, I just like a couple hours ago, I just burned some. Right? I was at a gas station last night. Uh, after a show, Nikki picked up a, uh, a, oh, a bundle of sage. She got me one as well. And the guy goes, the guy behind the counter goes, sage purchase at a gas station. Yeah, dude. The guy was, the guy was from, he was from Sri Lanka. So he gets it, you know, okay. and he, was, he was telling us and he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, sage kills the virus. You just put it in your room, you know, your house, and then you open the oh, doors yeah. and it takes everything out, you know, and it's, uh, it's worked. They, sage kills the virus. Like, yeah. oh man, I, we should have, why did we not implement this? You're a genius. I know. It's just spice. That's all it is. If you just read about vitamin D and then light sage on fire, you'll be safe mm-hmm. from this uh, virus that's taking down people left and right. Yeah, it's fine. It's good. You just I, sometimes I'll, you know you put the sage, uh, inhale it, get it through yeah. your body. Some oh, people you smoke, smoke sage. sage. Yeah, yeah, some, spliff. some people smoke them, right? Do they really? I bet you Native Americans have smoked it here or there. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, it looks like it's like, uh, I mean, it smells good, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you or that it's not poisonous, you know, because we as well know love smells great, but it's poisonous. It can be a bitch. Love can be a bitch. It it, it can, not not her. So, (laughs) so uh, we're lighting off sage in your fantasy house uh, dining room, eating some lamb. What else are we eating? Feed me. Uh, Ice cream, everything. Ice cream, lamb, lamb ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> right next to you, there's a bowl of ice cream, and it never, and it's always, it's a self cooling bowl that it's, and the ice cream will never melt. You have, That's you have, for, awesome. as long as you, as long as you want, as long as you want, you know, take as long as you want to eat the ice cream. Uh, but I'll probably eat it before you do. That's okay. It's, it's there for too long. Um, the ice cream's not even, there's none left already. You're like that bowl. It will keep the ice cream. Gone. And I, I turn to you with an empty bowl. I go. Oh. 
Yeah, it's gone. And you don't have, but here's the thing. You don't have to even do that because there's unlimited. See, here's the thing. In this kitchen, there's unlimited food and the calories don't count and yeah. sugar doesn't make a dent. It doesn't even, it doesn't even register. It just, it, it goes into your body and then immediately gets vacuumed out and uh. transported somewhere else. So you're, you're, you're never, you're never full. But the only thing is that being never full and never satiated means that you, and you're never going to have consequences from it. So it's up to you for how long you want to spend in that kitchen. You know, I'll die. Uh, I'll die on this hill of sage ice cream. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. I mean, if they make ice cream, we ain't going nowhere. Dude, if they have sage ice cream and lavender ice cream, you know, I mean, they have garlic ice cream. So I've I've had it. I've had garlic ice cream. I've had ice cream with bacon. I've had, um, I've had Thanksgiving ice cream at, um, salt and straw. Which had like gravy in it and like oh, really and yeah I'll eat anything. What the hell? If that you make it into great. ice cream form, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> La- lavender honey is my favorite, but also uh, any kind of Earl Grey or jasmine tea or anything like that ice cream. And then, uh, uh, but I think sage would be like freaking rad. What would yeah. you go for if you, if you could like invent a flavor right now for this meal? We're sitting here. We're full on lamb. We're all, we got mm-hmm. greasy lips, greasy lamb lips, satiated. Yeah. But now it's time for some like unique ice cream. What ice cream are you getting that's invented? Uh, I'm probably doing a, a lavender Nutella ice cream. Ooh, that's an interesting Somehow, combo. Like, I can try that, that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I never realized how much lavender, like I'll take the lavender pills and you burp up Yeah, hey, you lavender. gave me one before. I just yeah, took it dude. recently. It was really fun. Oh, dude. Yeah. It's such a weird thing because then it's oddly soothing. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like you're burping up and you're like, oh, everything's okay. Uh, everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, every burp, every burp every feels burp. like it's gonna be all right. Well, That's how they market it. Like yeah. Every burp, you'll feel like everything's gonna be all right. I mean, it works. You know, like I feel good afterwards. Um, but yeah, I, like I, I actually bought lavender in the bag, like food grade lavender. I just have it mm-hmm. in the closet, and you know, it's. Uh, I just smell it every now. I open it up like a like a drawer of panties. I'm just. Oh like, yeah, it's nice. It's <sighs> it's not not only is it good. Is that, this is what I wish this was a live episode because that would have been the uh, either the. Oh, or the laughs, and it was just you and me steamrolling past a, a drawer of panties reference. I'm putting the perv hashtag riffs out there for folks. Well, I mean, at that point, all you're doing is just making sure that the panties don't have any moths because lavender, you know, dispels the moths. The moths don't want to be around any lavender. So I didn't, I didn't know that, but that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that and cedar. Cedar that's, ice cream sounds great. Cedar, oh my god, hardly, hardly newer. I love, uh, I love. Um, um, Ice cream. That's it. That's the end of the sentence? <laughs> That's all of ice cream. Piece of, in hey, the words of our great governor of past, you son of a bitch. I'm going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, I mean, that, that was just a great episode of what I wanted to do, which was something fun and focused on a particular room. Mm. Is that, 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 that just, I thought that might be a fun thing. I, I'm all about experimenting, right? We're only, we're not even at 200 episodes yet. I'm just like excited for like, all right, we're bringing it back now, thankfully, after this crazy hiatus. Yeah. And um, I wanted to just do a kitchen and a meal. And I feel like we did that really well. And that was fun. And it didn't take a lot of prep time from you. It didn't take a lot of prep time from me, which is essential for how busy we're both, we both are. Uh, me yeah. being a, a realtor and you being a, a comedian and investor and um, an actor and a lover. And um, I'm glad you brought up the love part because a lot of people... They don't accept that on your resume? Ironically, they skirt past it. And I say ironically because I was born in the 70s. So, And you're a fan of Alanis Morissette's number one and only hit. Skirt the song, Irony? Irony, yes. That's what, I thought you were talking about Skirt. Isn't there a lot of irony, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. I'm, I guess the song would have been different if she said, isn't that coincidental? It's like Rain Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> if he was actually on Parks and Rec. Yeah. It's like Aziz and sorry if he had a longer neck. No, it doesn't make – well, it does make some some sense. You know, that's the industry's number one complaint about Aziz is he's got a short neck. That's, they always have to cheat the shots of him because they're like, we got to do something to make him look like he's got a normal size neck. <laughs> like, don't ever try to get him and Tom Cruise together acting because they won't know like, how many what, – what camera points where. No, they'll never have any idea. Uh, Wait, what, are, you, are you a Tom Cruise fan? I grew up on Top Gun. I mean, yeah, yeah. Interview the vampire, Top Gun. If that's not enough to love Tom Cruise and seeing him yell at that crew at the beginning of the pandemic when they weren't taking it seriously, I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does his own stunts. That's pretty. Oh cool. yeah, he does. Right. I mean, that's pretty cool. Honestly, for like the the, the way that people um, 
the shit that people get away with in this world. I was like, that's pretty cool that yeah. he actually like risks his own, you know, his own neck yeah. out there. You know, his neck. He can he can afford to risk his neck because he has yeah. one. And that's no offense to Aziz Ansari. No, and, and that's it brings us back. Yeah, that just, brings us back. Just in the neck of the neck of time. The neck of time. The neck of time, which is like uh, a, it's a it's a giraffe re- uh, reference. There's something I'm thinking, of a, I'm thinking of a Wu Tang lyric, something about roughneck business, but. Yeah, yeah, with the rough right. neck. Uh, right. Yeah, right. with the is rough that from neck. Thirty six chambers. It is right. Uh, One of the greatest albums of all time. With the rough neck business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably it's probably been mentioned in a few Wu Tang albums. Um, was that in Spec? No. Was that Ray Kwan? No. Everybody loves Ray okay. Raymond Kwan. Oh. Everybody loves Ray Kwan. <laughs> <laughs> Ma. That was a big pop song. Uh, Ma. This is Pete know. Holmes. Yeah. This is Pete Holmes here to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, the chef Ray Kwan. has a small mouth. That's a, if, that, if that's your biggest problem, though, Sandro, it's like, okay, so it takes him three more extra scoops to get all the same amount of ice cream down that you and I had. I don't yeah. think you've got you know too much to complain about. No, 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 no. I'm not saying like a bad thing. I'm just like it's something I noticed about him. Well, the fact that you notice things about Pete Holmes's mouth makes me wonder. Good. Not about you, but about Pete Holmes's mouth. Oh. Is there a competition for world's smallest mouth? Sign Pete Holmes up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the human fleshlight, Pete Holmes. <laughs> it's about to get even weirder on this podcast, folks. You made it really weird. Folks, how many references can I have? I actually went to a live taping of when he had his show, uh, the Pete Holmes show, which was freaking great. Yeah. Conan, Conan, Conan produced uh, the Pete Holmes show. Oh, okay, that's right. It was awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basically it was basically just Conan with different color backdrop and Pete Holmes, but it was great. Um, I forgot about that because I think was he doing it around the same time he was doing Crashing? No, this is way before fr- Crashing. Way before Crashing. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Back to sugar. We always go back to sugar. We go back to sugar. Crashing sugar, sage ice cream. Yep. N- Nutella lavender. Nutella lavender. Um, I'm not sure, like you know, sometimes like I don't like the rose combination of stuff, like rose ice cream and. Oh, rose. dude, I love rose water ice cream. There was a place called Sweet Rose, one of my yeah. favorites, uh, and it was on Beverly uh, and Stanley, right there, right like uh, right by the Grove, and they went out of business way before the Pandy, sadly. But they were so freaking. Their, their mint ice cream was the only real mint ice cream. We're like, oh, this is like crushed up. Oh, mint's mint good. Like it, the flavor was so uh, unique. That's yeah. That'll save anything. Mint ice cream is so oh. refreshing. It's, ref- it's so ref- it, it is. It makes you feel like you you don't have diabetes from eating too much ice cream. Yeah, yeah, it does because it's. I associate it with you know brushing my teeth, which is something good you do for yourself. Because when you brush your teeth, you're never like ugh. I'm, I hate. I hate that I did that. That's you know, how the credits are going to roll for this episode of Fantasy House with Sandro. <laughs> it does brushing our teeth. The credits are rolling over as while we're brushing our teeth with ice cream. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> what, what ice cream was it like? No, you... we're both brushing our teeth with mint, mint ice cream from, from Sweet Rose. Yeah, okay. Okay. If you're listening to this and you're in the LA area, there still is a Sweet Rose location. I believe it's either in, I want to say it's either in the Valley somewhere, Santa Monica somewhere, or downtown LA, but you have to look it up, Google them. It's a great little uh, little ice cream spot. They make all their own ice cream. I want to say it's privately owned, um, but I feel like I, I used to talk to the owner, but she might have just been one of the managers there, but... I feel like it's like a privately owned business by a woman that kicks ass and um, they had to shut the one down in mid city, but I'm almost positive there's other locations still because I panic when they close. I, to me, people that own restaurants and ice cream parlors and bakeries, they're just other kinds of artists. And mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's just like, I want to see atmosphere come out with a new album. I want the ice cream maker to keep their business running. I want the person that's making the really cool, um, you know, beef tartars. I want them to fucking keep on doing their art. And um, Sweet Rose, you know, they're still around, as from, from what I know. So look them up. If you're listening to this in your L.A. area or you're going to be making a trip out here, any, any of our crime or fantasy house listeners, support them. And most importantly, support Sandro. Sandro is one of the coolest dudes, one of the funniest dudes out there. I mean, are, what are you passionate about right now? Like, this is, this is, I want you to plug your social media and tell us what you're passionate about, what you're excited about right now. Um, I'm pretty uh, – my social media is uh, at uh... – Sandro, not Sandra, or at Sandro, not Sandra, depending on how you pronounce things, um, on all, all platforms. And uh, what I'm passionate about right now is uh, basically, and this is going to sound so weird, but I'm just passionate about kind of doing with doing what I want to do um, uh, in the moment that I'm thinking about it. 
which is like basically just like you know like I, I like doing stand up so when I'm doing stand up I'm I'm passionate about that so whatever I'm doing I just like to be passionate about that thing and I know it sounds kind of hokey or whatever but right now it's uh, uh, anal sex. And, no, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really. Whether I'm you're really, giving or receiving this season, that's definitely keeps you in the moment. It's uh, the, it's and they call it the Christmas of uh, of sex positions because it's a lot of good shit. A lot of good. Shit. Um, <laughs> no, you definitely do have to pay attention when it comes to anal sex. Oh yeah, see, like if you if you don't have to pay attention while you're having anal sex, then you know you're 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 pro. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Only a professional yeah. doesn't have to take that fucking stuff serious. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. You, you got to know what's going on. You got to you got to pay attention. There's a lot of before and after work, if you know what I mean. A lot of investment. This um, is definitely the most NSFW real estate podcast for sure. I've listened to a few real estate podcasts where like the host is like a kind of like a Tony Robbins that curses a little bit, like a Gary mm-hmm. Vee that says fuck. And you're like, yeah. no, that's not NSF. NSF. A real estate podcast where they yeah. go, you know, anal sex is, uh, you got to be, you got to yeah. concentrate. I'm like, that <laughs> is an NSFW real estate podcast. That's how you do it. That's how you're talking about, that's an investment right there. That's an investment. <laughs> in time investment. In Definitely a risky investment. It is risky. Yeah, it's risky business. Talking about, speaking about Tom Cruise. But, um, uh, uh, but no, but uh, I, I like, you know, just comedy in general. I'm really passionate about performing lately. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I like to go out there and talk about like just doing art, just doing something that, you like to do that expresses yourself in some weird way. And the cool thing is that when somebody out there is like, Oh, I like what you're doing. And you're like, Oh, that's cool. I'll just, I'll, I'll keep doing it then. You know, and it, it makes you, it makes you feel good. And uh, I like my passion is basically just rambling. Way to end it with that, dude. Uh, so guys look up Sandro at uh, Sandro, not Sandra, not Sandra, Sa- Sandro, not Sandra. Uh, and, and we'll tag you on, on Instagram, yeah, um, I mean, all that good stuff. Um, dude, I'm so glad that you're doing well, and it makes me so happy. You too, buddy. You're the, you're the best. Every, every, every compliment you give me, I can give right back to you tenfold. Oh, dude, We're just you a couple of dudes, 69, best. complimenting each other. Yeah, that's the way it should be, always, you know. But, but it's authentic, dude. Like, uh, you inspire, and you are, you know, you're my road dog. I love you, and I'm just grateful that you took the time to do this with me, and it was special that we, like, oh, got it started you, again together. Like, it just it means a lot yeah. to me. In my mind, we're always on our way to San Miguel. We're always going That's to the right. ranch. We're always in that never-ending road we, trip. We need to post. We need to post a, a, a hashtag <laughs> yeah. on our way to San Miguel, dude. Let's, yeah, freaking do that. As soon as I get off, off the phone with you on that, we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I love I'll, I'll, I love you, dude. Thank you so much for doing this. I love you, buddy. Thank you guys so much for listening. Go ahead, give Sandro a follow at Sandro, not Sandra. It's going to be on our Instagram. And hit the share button. Send this to someone you know and love and, and that can handle some of this ridiculous meta riffing that Sandra and I did. And thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I feel like a hashtag blessed guest getting to be there in Sandro's kitchen eating the Sandro meal and, and getting to make this podcast with you guys. The world's number one NSFW real estate podcast. Fantasy house. All right, you guys. Be silly. Have fun. Mwah!